Hey everybody, Scott Dust here. Welcome to the channel. If you're interested in learning more about organizational behavior and organizational psychology, you're in the right place. The conversations we'll be having are about infusing science to better understand how to lead and manage ourselves and others. If you're interested, please subscribe. Thanks and good luck. Hey everybody, Scott Dust here with my co-host, Louis DiCarlo. This is the Self-Leadership Experiment, a blog, vlog, and podcast where we bridge the gap between science and practice for all things organizational behavior. This is blog number three, stop comparing. So it's innate. We can't help ourselves. We inevitably will compare ourselves to others in every aspect of life, particularly in work. I mean, it's just part of who we are. And it helps us in some ways because it helps us ensure that we're doing the right things and not doing the wrong things. And a lot of those cues come from other actors, from the people that are in our environment. So it can be good because it keeps us on track, but it can also be really detrimental because a lot of times these comparisons are to people that might be doing something that we aspire to do. So we feel bad about ourselves because we can't also do that. So what are your thoughts? Self-comparison is good, bad, or indifferent? Well, I think self-comparison is, is, is just like most other things in the world, right? When it's done the right way, it can be very valuable. But so often, uh, I think a high percentage of, of this cases and situations is it's, it's done not the right way. And the net uh, result is, is, you know, either psychological or, you know, what some sort of damage, right? Um, so I'm, I'm looking at the blog here right now. And, and the one thing that stands out to me here is what sacrifices have they made? Is that really what I want? And so I so often, I think we find ourselves comparing ourselves to someone in the workplace um, or someone in our social setting, and we want to be like them, but we have no idea what it took for that person to get there. What was that road like? Right. And were they happy that they went down that road? Right. Yeah, inevitably, people made choices along the way, and those choices might not have been things that were in the cards for you, or the things you're willing to replicate in order to get where you are. And once you're there, is that really what you want, right? Like uh, being a thought leader to some degree in whatever your domain of interest is. Like once you get there, then you have to maintain that. And that then creates responsibilities and you're managing something that might be risky and that pulls on your time. And I don't think it's easy to compare ourselves, but it's hard to think through the implications of what that really entails. Cause we don't know, cause we're not there yet. And um, it's easier said than done though. I think, I mean, so comparison, right? I think this is more of a culture issue right? And, and a social issue. But we spend so much of our time in our, in our lives in the workplace. Uh, you know, roughly a third of our work, of our Monday through Friday is at work, right? So, you know, it can be challenging, right? And I think more so the focus should be less of comparing yourself to others, but more of the just becoming a better version of yourself and slow incremental improvements to whatever your goals are right and right um otherwise you know you kind of can go down this deep path of or a dark path of unrealistic and un unattainable goals that you but it can might be not actually want yeah right you might not actually want it but it can be informative right it's like if you don't engage in some degree of social comparison you're not really pushing yourself to think about what you could potentially change to make yourself better or to grow or develop. Um, not just not necessarily by being a high performer, but potentially just being happier or having well, whatever it means to you. So there's utility in it, but if you take it too far or if you use it the wrong way, that's where it becomes detrimental. And I feel like a lot of people do, when, when they do, it can be a big hit to their self-esteem. Right. If you're you're doing a great job and you're doing just fine, but you're not the 
the all-star high performer um, or an outlier, so to speak, that is doing amazing things, there's no need for your self-esteem to take a hit, uh, but it never really does because you're looking at somebody that's, you know, doing something off the charts. I think the key thing here is balance, right? You kind of, yeah. you pretty much said just that, right? You, you need both to be successful and to have the, the feedback and the awareness and the knowledge to kind of develop yourself right. and know where you are in terms of um, performance and abilities and, you know, that self-fulfilling um, that we all, we all look for, you know, we all seek to, to improve ourselves. Right. And so if you don't have, if you're not comparing yourselves to the best, then you don't really know where you fit in, right. but you need to do that carefully. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's interesting. Self-comparison theory and the research behind it has been done almost in every domain except work, which is crazy to me because work is completely structured in teams and in teams within teams. I mean, that is just a staple of our organizational setting. We know it goes on intuitively um, and circumstantially, but there still really isn't a lot of sophisticated research out there yet within that, within that field. Um, so for all the researchers out there, that's something to, to dive in and consider. All right. That was a good one. Um, okay. Thanks for joining. Uh, for more resources on bridging the gap between science and practice for all things organizational behavior, go to scottdust.com. And from there, you can subscribe to the monthly newsletter and find more evidence-based insight through social media, YouTube, and podcasts. Thanks and see you next time.